it's really hard to not just do this knowing that we have the Howling Abyss and they are running low on cards. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a very peculiar list, and there's a reason for it, and so I guess I should give you the background explaining why I'm doing what I'm doing today. If you follow Legends of Runeterra on Twitter, and they may have posted it on other socials as well, they posted something called the Road to the Seasonal Tournament. They do this traditionally every time they run the event, and it includes things to highlight along the way. One of the things that they highlighted is an event that's going to be occurring on Thursday called Marine Masters. This is a charity event that's being put on by Cephalopod, who is a very renowned tournament player in Legends of Runeterra. And the idea that Cephalopod and some of the other players had was to get a bunch of the casters from the community together and have a tournament where the casters play and the players cast. And so I'm going to be taking part in that. And it's traditional Riot Lock as far as format goes, but one of the things that they are encouraging is you to be unique because there's going to be, uh, I guess, a prize for the winner. But again, the whole thing's for charity, so I'm not really worried about prizes. But there's also theoretically going to be a prize for, like, the, the neatest deck. They just say the coolest deck. They don't have anything in the rules that they've handed out that explains... How that's going to be chosen maybe it's just by the players who are casting and running the event maybe they'll do twitch polls i don't know but there's something for that and so given that we're one about to see a ton of very good high-end tournament quality play in the seasonal here in the near future filled with meta decks but also given that this is for charity and i expect it to be a lighthearted event i wanted to play some lighthearted decks which brings us to this deck. This deck is championless, unitless, Howling Abyss Control. That's right. I wanted to go full spirit of ARAM, all random, all mid. And that's that's what we are going to be piloting today. I don't know if this is going to be part of my lineup. I've still actually not settled on it, but it's in the running because I just want to do stuff that is ridiculous and maybe has highlight real moments. I think this is one of those decks that is capable of that depending on the champions you pull or it could just fall flat on its face. I don't know, but we're going to play it for today's video. We're probably going to play it in normals because as I said, I think this is going to be a lighthearted event and I expect many other people to have the same mindset as me and so this could be a bit wild could be a bit anything goes and I think you're more likely to run into the kinds of decks you would see in normals as opposed to say on the master's ladder so we're going to go through the deck list I'm going to talk through my inclusions if you haven't already skipped ahead I use time tags so you can do that I'm sorry that I'm ranting a bit more than I usually do in the beginning but I wanted to give you guys some background as to why I'm just all of the sudden playing a unitless deck because it's a bit out of the norm. So here we go. Go hard. Uh, this does double duty. One, it's removal and it's obviously helping us with our whole unitless deck. Uh, but also because of Howling Abyss being our only real win condition on the off chance that we ever play three and all three get destroyed for some reason, uh, we need another way to win, and so Go Hard maybe is our way to win by decking our opponent because we can get ourselves into a scenario where we just don't run out of cards, and they maybe do. Maybe. So it's kind of double duty, but we're not running, like, massive draw engines. This isn't a Go Hard deck. Like, this is a, you know, one damage drain, essentially, in this list with the nice-to-have of maybe you pack some bags. Vile Feast. Not technically a unit, but it's also something that does make a unit. But you'll also notice that that's about it. So Vile Feast is uh, really important. But again, this is really just about a stalling. So it makes sense. Flash Freeze. Stalling. And I think that Frostbite's just really good in general right now. Even if I don't expect true meta decks. Flash Freeze is one of those effects that's really important to have for sometimes other shenanigans. 
and there's always the off chance that somebody does bring like a meta lineup because they want to win like i won't put it past some of the other casters to potentially try to try hard it it's just not it's not what my goal is going to be for this event uh ice shard because we like board sweepers avalanche because we like board sweepers and ravine uh because we like board sweepers we don't know what we're playing against and so i just want to be able to nuke stuff the box is a one of just to make people play around it catalyst is because we really want to ramp up so that we can slap our howling abyss down and start getting value and it's also life gain grasp withering whale harsh winds is just flash freeze 2.0 howling abyss vengeance and ruination in three ofs because again we're really just blowing up the board over and over again because we keep getting champions in many ways this deck is an attrition deck normally you could build something that could almost be competitive with a, a list like this and you would just fall back on the old like ledros atrocity or you know feel the rush there, there's a number of combos you could put in this but we are going unitless with howling abyss so this is the list on the off chance somebody wants to pilot this thing i will still put the deck code in the video description put a link to mobilytics in the video description but as I said before, we're going to go uh, jump onto the normal ladder to see if we can pilot this thing to a victory. And I'm, I'm crossing my fingers because um, I don't know. There's a chance that this could flop pretty hard. Like if you don't draw your Howling Abyss for forever, you're kind of a sitting duck. And then even more so if they have a way to blow it up or, you know, they just rush you down and you don't have the right removal at the right time. Uh, there's a lot riding on this. So I'm really... Uh, nervous about trying to play this but we're gonna see how it goes oh no we're jumping into our first game and you know I actually don't know whether or not we are considered favored or not here I actually like this in this matchup so I was about to say oh no because uh, Lissandra Swain is the kind of deck that if you don't have answers to it uh, it's just going to ruin your day. I say as ruination gets drawn. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Uh, but I guess they can't really deal non-combat damage if we never play any units for them to actually damage. Maybe that is our strategy here, is that we just do nothing forever. I mean... They're going to attack us and we're going to catalyst. So I think that's fine. We'll pass. They'll likely pass. Oh, wow. They actually developed something. All right. We'll avalanche. They might run something like troll chance to keep these alive but i think this is a fine enough avalanche they also could have just been baiting that out but so far we're the ones that are dealing the non-combat damage and we got these ruinations as well oh they're also running the drac attack huh the problem is i almost guarantee this deck runs scorched earth so we actually might not be able to keep our Howling Abyss, which could be a really bad time. Is this vengeance worthy? That is the real question here. I think so. If we didn't have double ruination, I would not be happy with this vengeance because I think you want to save those for like Leviathan. But moment of truth do they have that scorched earth that they can snap play are they mousing this over right now going wait what is this card i don't even remember oh interesting so they are like on a pretty hard stun game plan here we get we get a, a tk the old TKO, if you will. Um, am I okay with taking that kind of damage? Uh, yeah, we're fine with passing here. We have harsh winds. If they just attack with this, we can harsh winds. 
Just buy ourselves some time. We still carry full spell mana that way. We're just trying to bait them into playing more units. So these ruinations are more impressive. Or safely wait till we can develop Tom Kench. Now, City Breaker is interesting. What do we get this time? Lulu? I think we're going to play our units this round just to see if we can bait them into playing more on their end. And then as long as they don't take the open attack, we have Ruination on a relatively full board. Bloody business. But this is the one where it strikes an enemy, so we can counter that like so. Because allowing Tom Kench to survive is relatively important. We can actually eat this city breaker next round. Yep, that tasted purple. Go ahead and play the Lulu as well. It's a potential blocker. Now I expect flocks here, right? Because this is damage. So there's the first flock. And then there is an ice shard. So now they're getting that non-combat damage in. They do get rid of the Tom Kench, but the good news is now they're also down to just the two cards. So Here we're trading Lulu for the drummer, but since she would be stunned next round anyway, this is as good as blocking something when we would not have had the opportunity to do so. And I think I'm okay with that. Oh, Katarina here is kind of comically fun. couple of different ways that we could tackle this actually because again I, unless they have troll chant i'm not putting them on a ton of buffs here um we do it like this we still end up with the spider we gain our four health back so we'll end up at 19, I believe. But right now we're just playing this game of attrition. So they want to flock it so that I don't get a spider, huh? And I don't drain the three health. But that, again, is fine. If I'm being entirely honest, like... That's a win for us that they used a flock on their own unit to keep me from gaining health. We got Tom Kench again. Oh, they're going to be so upset. I know I would be. All right, let's play Tom Kench. See if we can bait more removal out of him before we play the cat. Oh, all right. So here comes a Swain. The Swain I respect. All right, so this is going to ping us which will stun Tom Kench. Trying to run through my head here. We're short the ability to play a ruination, and so they likely get the open attack. But this stuns the strongest. So if we play a Katarina here, and we just end the round, that still leaves us with a blocker for the Swain, which is the important piece. Darius is a decent rip. Uh, Harsh Winds here is great because now we can make it so that Swain doesn't actually hit us. So they're just going to obliterate our units. And that's fine. I think here we can develop the Darius because we still have enough for the Harsh Winds. 
handle this so even if they have something that pings us to stun this because again they just they're trying to connect with this So that hits the Darius gets stunned and now what we got a couple of different options here I really like uh, gangplank instead of the ruination I rarely forget I never forget. gangplank is a very threatening unit here because at some point we actually need to get rid of this city breaker but So they are going with the decisive maneuver just to stun Gangplank so that it cannot attack. So I think we're going to take advantage of this keg. Bank our three spell mana, but this will allow us to heal because again, we have the harsh winds. And we're about to get units back as well this next round. So unless they have a rally effect here, that was the only way that we get super punished. All right, so we get units back, but they have these. now so th this is interesting because i think this is perfect ruination time even though we lose so much it's really hard to not just do this knowing that we have the howling abyss and they are running low on cards now we get punished when they potentially play a follow-up swing here But we dodge it. Renekton is an okay pickup for the old level two here. Now let's go ahead and go with a Swain as well. Now this is an important ordering because if Swain connects first, then it should because of Fearsome. That will... Uh, deal it to all enemy enemies and the nexus and so in doing so that means that renekton should be connecting for the full value as well and so that's why you see the 15 here and so this uh this should be pretty close to wrapping this up for us oh they have a guillotine okay i understand that's fair We still have a fistful of cards plus the Howling Abyss there. I've dressed for Play the, the Vlad. In red. And I think here we just take the open attack, though. Though the misfortune is a uh, slap in the face. So, all right, uh, that went pretty well. I know it's just normals, but again, I'm kind of expecting a bit of a more lighthearted atmosphere. And so with that in mind, I think I'm going to take this deck and jump on to the actual ladder. I'm going to go play this on the master's ladder and we're going to see how that goes. So. I don't expect it to go well, but we're going to go do it for uh, a game. And let's just, uh, I guess, cross our fingers and pray. We're going to do it for a game and, you know, win or lose, we're going to see what kind of outcome we're looking at with this list. For this game, we are really going to be testing ourselves. And I guess this is fine.
Our biggest issue in this matchup is that we don't have great ways to kill Azir, and we don't have great ways to obviously get rid of the Deus. And the Deus is actually our biggest nemesis here, our biggest problem. But we're going to see if we can navigate this. I am not confident with this matchup, but I'm also deep down kind of sincerely hoping that this isn't something that is brought. We're going to try to go hard this before they can play another unit. I suspect they have this into uh, something like a Dune Keeper. Next time. And that's what they were trying to set up there. Azir's command. I think we just let this go and bank the spell mana. I mean, I'm not happy about taking the damage, but this is something that will end up dying to uh, like an avalanche. All right, so we found our win con. We can survive long enough to get there. Sharima, your emperor has That's returned. a pretty big if from us. Um, I think box is better used elsewhere. As I just think about ways to navigate this Azir issue. So I think if we do the Avalanche now, we'll still have enough. We're going to bank the one spell of mana. So we'll still have enough to grasp this to finish it off if they don't have the buff. Or... Maybe make some other decisions if they really flood the board. But I think that getting this Azir into killable range, because they haven't played a Deus yet, which is a bit of a godsend. I think this might be the right call. Our biggest issue here is that we... We kind of want them to flood the board so that we can get great value out of this box. Or a Withering Whale or, or something to that effect. But we don't want this Azir to level and then us not have a good way to kill it. With the Grasp next turn. I suppose Withering Whale, though, buys us some time. Because with Withering Whale here, it will at least put the one damage on it. Uh, in this case, though, it's not going to be the Whale. We're going to box so that we can deal with the Irelia as well. Oh, interesting. So they're going for that attack first. I guess that's smart if you're playing around the box because that means that if they had played the duet they lose all of this anyway I was going to say with two mana there they would have to have uh, essentially two of the buffs in order to keep the Aurelia alive so the downside here though is that this Azir is now going to level and our grasp now will not kill it so all of my concerns kind of coming through here but we are slowly whittling away their cards so really this matchup I think is just about surviving till we can get an abyss down uh shards not terrible there I think here this is a bit of a tough call because like you want to get rid of this but I think we just know that we're going to do this anyway my concern is uh, blade dance get punished kind of hard right now by like double ribbon but we needed to set this up so that now the downside is this is going up to the twos but we could do something like this we gotta make sure our orders are correct here now a buff keeps azir alive here
They do have four cards again. All right, so they do in fact have the Nopify and that is, you know, obviously not great for us. We're gonna have to decide this next round whether we wanna be greedy and drop the Abyss or just pass. This is, I think, the challenging part of this matchup is at some point we need to drop this so that we have an opportunity to win. But anytime you do so without some sort of play to back it up, you open yourself up to blade dances. Now, the only reason that I'm tempting myself with that thought is that they haven't really played many blade dance effects thus far. But the fact that they're pausing here makes me wonder if they are now. Because they could play some right now again if they've got Ribbon Dancer or something to that effect would be problematic for me right now but it goes that's a good top deck for us i think we just attack here uh-oh i think I think we might get a victory out of this just because they DC'd, which is going to make me feel a little sad. It's not the way I wanted this victory. I wanted to actually showcase what this list could maybe do. Uh, we were we were close. We were on the threshold, right? We were getting into the danger zone, but their hand hadn't been very great up until this point. We'll uh, we'll play this then. On the off chance they do come back, then we probably lose. <laughs> Since we're taking this opportunity to be greedy, but... I don't know. This felt a little bit better than I thought it would in terms of the actual... matchup. But again, they also, like, didn't have a deus, right? So I think that we were just kind of favored... by default of them having a not very great hand. I'm just hoping nobody actually brings this to the event. I'm hoping that fun is on the docket. But I think this is going to be a DC, which sadly means that's going to be the, the end of the video. This is not how I had foreseen my foray onto the ladder going. that's okay this is i i think still fi a fine enough snapshot because the reality is i'm not planning on winning a lot of games at this event you know I, I mentioned that the focus was on fun and i meant it it's so weird that they haven't like lost yet they're they very clearly are like not taking actions and have DC'd here. But to finish that train of thought, I am not planning on winning a ton of games. I just wanted to do something kind of unique and fun. And with the seasonal tournament right around the corner as well, I think that there's going to be great examples of top tier play and meta decks and all of that at that event. So I just kind of wanted to play the kinds of decks that you are not going to see during that event and unit list aram decks if you're if you're not a league fan uh that's the howling abyss thing um yeah these are not what you would expect to see at the seasonal but you know hey uh we jumped on the ladder and i gained some lp so i guess uh i should just retire this deck now 100 percent win rate on the master's ladder but you made it this far i appreciate you thank you for watching thank you for putting up with my weird upload times i've got more videos coming in the near future and i've got some other pretty great news as well so i'm looking forward to sharing that when i finally can i'm also looking forward to the new expansion and you know 
let's just uh hop back out real quick other things that i'm looking forward to while we're here in the client is the calendar of events because if you're not paying attention gang right here june 16th uh we're getting you know a content patch and so while it's not the expansion coming at the end of the month uh rise of the underworld where we're expecting some additional champions to join us I, I won't talk about those leaks but many of you probably already know what they are uh we get what is likely going to be more skins now i'm hoping for like pool party braum or something to that effect but just in general i'm, I'm really looking forward to this so yeah good stuff coming from me in the future good stuff coming from the game in the future looking forward to this seasonal event the expansion I know that a lot of people have been, you know, a bit negative about the state of the game lately, and I'm not going to dissuade anybody from their own feelings. Your feelings are valid, but I think there's, there's still an awful lot to be excited about for Runeterra. And at the end of the day, there's always still labs, which are uh, fantastic and fun. So anyway, that's it for this video. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Until next time, may you walk on warm sands.